Well, hello, hello, and welcome to Black Hammer Artisan. My name is Joseph, and today we're going to be looking at how to build your first medieval forge bows. So the design I'm building this off here is all over the medieval ages, but it's roughly, this one is a fifth century bellows design, and pretty self-explanatory. Yep, you have a piece of wood here, it's called the top plate, coming down, it's got a leather hinge to a block of wood here, and you have another one on the bottom, and then you have leather wrapping around this here, all connecting into the block at the front, the tweer block, as they call it, and there's a hole through that and a pipe jetting out the front, which sticks into the end of your forge, pumping air into it and making your fire hot. So, for those of you who don't know, fire burns oxygen and bellows, pumps oxygen. So when you pump air into the forge, it gets hot for blacksmithing purposes. The tools you're gonna need for this, or the tools I'm gonna use at any rate, are a small ax for cutting the wood, a hammer for driving the tacks and tacks, a knife, a farrier's rasp, and something to be a straight edge. I'm just gonna use this flat piece of steel. I'm also gonna be using this saw. You don't necessarily have to have a saw, but it's very helpful very useful. I'm gonna be using pretty much medieval tools. Uh, you can use whatever tools you want, but for this, I'm going full on medieval. So the material it's gonna be using for this, if you intend to do it the way I do, is two one by 12 boards, roughly two feet long. The material, the uh, measurements are very flexible, but some tacks, some leather, a thin willow wand is what I'm gonna be using for the rib. You'll see how that comes in later. And a small piece of pipe, metal pipe, steel pipe. All right, so how I'm gonna mark this, I'm gonna take my straight edge here, and uh, roughly four inches in, again, measurements are very flexible. I'm gonna lay it down. It's about mm, 20 inches long or so. I'm just gonna go from here to the edge of the board, slant ways. I'm just gonna take a knife, and scribe on a mark there. And do the same to the other side. I'm now just going to take the axe and I'm going to hack it roughly to those lines. So what I'm doing here is now that I've got it pretty close to the lines with the axe, I'm just going to take a rasp and get it really right down to those lines, so it's pretty much perfect. So, just gonna between my legs here. Take the diagonal strokes on it. You can already see there. It's looking pretty good right there, as opposed to that. So that's what we're doing now. So now, just gonna do the same thing on the other side here, and then all we gotta do is round the corners and we're done with the top plate. All right, so as you can see, it's taking shape beautifully, and we're now just gonna move back onto the rasping. All right, so it's worth mentioning that if you don't have a rasp, you can still make do. You can you can just do this with the ax or you can use your knife to smooth up your edges when you hack it out. Uh, but if you do have a rasp or if you just, you know, these are like 12 bucks at a lot of stores, uh, they are very, very, very helpful. And also, if since this is the first part of my beginning blacksmithing series, this is a very useful tool for hot rasping, which is kind of like the medieval version of grinding. So. If you have one, it's very worth using. Okay, so after you've got these all nicely hacked out and rasped down, you need to make something, or at least I like to aesthetically, make a uh, kind of a rounded back. That's how they usually had it. So I'm just gonna freehand, I'm just gonna use, this is just a, a punch here, but you can use anything, anything sharp, you can use a nail. Uh, and I'm just gonna kind of scribe on a line to work to roughly here hack down to it with the axe again and rasp it down. I'm 
just gonna bring this uh, curved line down to my tapers here so it all flows nicely. Alrighty, so uh, very happy with how this turned out. Got a nice rounded back here. It's all hacked down and rasped to where I want it to be. So I'm not gonna waste your time filming the next one, but we're just gonna make another one of these for the bottom plate. So we got our top and bottom plate done. And I'm just gonna do a little dry assembly here, show you how it's going to fit together. Essentially, you're gonna have your block here, the tuer coming out of that. You got your bottom plate there. You can kind of see your rib and your top plate here. It's gonna kind of cycle like that. And pump it up and down. Right, so the next part we're going to be making is this part right here. Everything ties into this. It's all the top, bottom, the rib, everything comes out of this thing. And tweer as well. Uh, it's called the block. And it's basically just two pieces put together with a hole. Usually you just carve in the hole or you could drill a hole. But I don't have uh, an auger to drill with so I'm just going to carve it in. And then you stick this piece of pipe in the end and everything nails onto that. Now that I got these two pieces, I can demonstrate a little bit easier. Basically, they're gonna to go together like that, they're gonna be nailed. But before we do that, we're going to take them apart like this. We're gonna carve in a groove here for our tweer pipe to sit in. Then we're gonna put it over that and nail it together. Right, so basically what I'm doing here um, instead is instead of carving deep grooves into here and trying to fit it together, that wasn't working all that great. So what I'm gonna do instead, or what I've already done, is carve just some real shallow grooves, much easier to do, and then put some spacers in here, just little pieces of, I guess they're one by, uh, and then wrapped it in leather and pretty tightly and uh, tacked it down. I think it's working pretty well, so we're gonna go with that. So once you got this all good and secured down reasonably well, you're just gonna take a saw and just, I'm gonna approximate it's probably three quarters of an inch. Uh, just gotta cut it a little shelf for the bottom plate to sit on. All right, so I should have done this before I assembled this. So if you're doing it the way I do it, definitely do it before you assemble it. Again, if you just used a solid block and drilled through it, this would all be easier. So I'm just knocking out the shelf here. As you can see, I saw it in the line there. Right, so this is the bottom of the bellows here, the bottom plate that I'm nailing on. show you a little dry fit up uh, again so basically this is the rib you can go like that and this yeah the rib's gonna be secured here this is gonna be secured like this bottom plate rib top like that and it will pump like that right so that's gonna end part one of making your first medieval forge bellows if you want to see the rest head over to part two and for now farewell wherever you fare